Folks, again, it's, it's, it's really good to be here with you. Good evening to you all. Um, imagine that you're looking at a photo album. You're flicking through the pages and you've got those pages that you have different pictures, different photographs, and somehow they seem to fit together. And nevertheless, you can just tell that they have been taken at different times, different locations. Uh, just... And nevertheless, somehow there, there's a theme, they belong together. I'd like to think about the four scripture readings for today in that way. There are four different readings that we heard, one sung beautifully, and they, they're, they're all taken in different, or written down in different places, different times. And nevertheless, I think there is something that binds these readings together. And I think that is the invitation to be in God's presence. And, and somehow that's connected to wisdom. Wisdom and God's presence and being in God's presence are uh, related. And I'm forgetting to put on my stopwatch and I should do that because otherwise we'll be sitting here for two hours. Because four pictures is a lot to talk about today, right? So, all right. I remember to add two minutes to that. So I, I hope to stick to the time. If not, Nathan, just, just tell me. <laughs> Just, just just, mute me. That's the wonderful thing about online worship, isn't it? So, folks, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the four pictures that we are seeing today. And, and I hope that together we can see how they belong together. So the first picture that we are going to look at is the picture of Psalm 1. And what we are seeing is quite clear picture. It's a picture of two roads, two ways. <clears throat> and, um, and one way is what the psalmists call the the path of the righteous and the other is the path of the wicked right? big words but will become clear now the picture that we're seeing is not passive at all it is actually it's very active when you look at the roads there is a lot of people walking around there's conversations they are laughing they're crying there's a lot of banter there's maybe some concocting of ideas and what should we do next and you know there's the teasing there's the playing around it's a very active lively picture that we see on both roads actually and the roads the roads don't you know they, they look a bit similar and nevertheless there is a marked difference between them so if you look at the path of the righteous you see it it, it it runs along a little river, there's green fields, there's, there's, there's trees, there's plants, there's a lot of fruit hanging from the trees. It's, it's just nice, it's peaceful, it's calm. You, you can just, you feel at peace there and it's just beautiful. Now, if you look at the other road, I'm not saying it's not beautiful, but you know, there's some fields and there's some fields of wheat and, but, but look at it, there's that, that feeling of peace that feeling of peace is missing from that road. And, and look at the people. The people are like the road. So if you look at the path of the righteous, the people like, they just look like abundant, of li abundant with life and all of that. Whereas on the path of the wicked, you just, well, you know what the psalmist says of that? They, they look, the people there look like chaff, just blown away by the wind in whatever direction the wind blows. There's not much stability. There is not, you know, that feeling of peace, that abundance of life that you have on the roads of the righteous. You just don't see that on the road of the wicked. Now, there's even more to see in the picture. Imagine this picture and, and, and look very closely. If you look closely, you can see that the path is leading somewhere. And you can see a little bit of the destinations. It's not, it's not very clear. But it seems that that road of the of the righteous that leads to, I don't know, what do you see there? Maybe, maybe it's something with a party. I, it, it looks like people are friends with each other. There's, there's just joy. You can just see that there's, there's joy in that picture. And there's that feeling of peace again. But then if you look at the other road where that is leading to, you can just, hmm, that destination doesn't look inviting, does it? It's, it's a kind of, I think I see some ruins there. I think some, some wounded people, really exhausted, but, but not finding rest, really. A very different destination in that road. And there's a difference between what the people do on the road. The people on the road of the righteous delight in God's presence, the psalmist says. They delight in God's law. And that 
God's law that sounds like a lot of rules and regulations and guidelines, but actually that that law we can we can think of that as a way in itself, as a vision for life. The people on the road of the righteous delight in thinking about pondering God's vision for life and being in God's presence. And 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 look at what the picture says there. God watches over his people on that road. So the first picture today, folks, in this photo album that we are looking at, the first picture is an invitation. There are two roads, and you're invited to choose the road of the righteous, the road of peace and life abundance. Now let's look at the second picture. And that second picture is the picture that we find in Mark, Mark 9, our gospel reading for today. <laughs> this is one of those funny stories in the gospels. Um, so, so they, they've just been, Jesus and, and the disciples just have been, been traveling and they are back home in Capernaum, they're in the house. And, you know, Jesus knows that there was something going on. There was something going on with the disciples when, uh, when, when they were talking together. And so Jesus says, well, all right, folks, um, tell me, what, what were you talking about? You know, I know it anyways, probably, but, you know, just tell me. I, it, you know, disciples are ashamed at this point, of course, because they, they're really embarrassed because what have they been talking about? Who is the most important? Now, remember, Jesus has said twice now that he will be killed. Now, in first time around, Peter first confessed Jesus as the Messiah. Maybe this was your, your lectionary reading of last week as well, Mark 8, for in my church it was. So Peter first acknowledged him as Messiah and then just five minutes later says, well, no, Jesus, you, you shouldn't die and all the rest of it. And then Peter gets rebuked. Okay. Before they journeyed today and traveled to Capernaum, Jesus said for a second time that he will be killed. Now, of course, they were afraid because if Jesus rebuked Peter like that, you don't want to have that a second time, right? So they were a little bit afraid, really. <laughs> and they just started talking about, well, actually, if it's true that Jesus will be killed and if we are going, to you know continue this gang then maybe there needs to be a new leader so who would that be you know they, they're all a little bit ambitious and you know they're we can just imagine that conversation can't we i mean don't we all sometimes compare ourselves to each other like you know i i think i'm just oh, okay you know she can sing really well but i'm just a little bit better i mean let's be honest i'm just a little bit better right and who of us is not dreaming about, you know, I don't know, making promotion or just that next step on the ladder or whatever it is. But it's just such a conversation that we can just imagine having and just a comparison with each other. And Jesus knows that that's what they've been talking about. And even if he doesn't know, he kind of feels that there was something. And so embarrassed, they say, yes, Jesus, that was what we were talking about. He can just see Jesus shaking his head and just thinking, oh, folks, you need to eat a good piece of humble pie. In God's kingdom, it's not about who's most important, certainly not by the standards of this world. And so this is what Jesus says. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of them all is the NIV translation that I use. Bam, there you go. Eat your, eat your piece of humble pie. If you want to be the very first, be the last and the servant rather than the leader of them all. And then to make things worse, Jesus takes a little child and says, you know what? If you want to receive me, you need to receive a child. Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me now a child in jesus time was worth nothing you know we tend to think of children mostly as cute and nice and you know life-giving joyful in jesus time a child a child you know a child was your insurance for the future for your old age when they would care for you but at this moment they just simply cost and they cost a lot right children were worth not that much in jesus time and what Jesus says here, this is such a typical Jesus move to say, you know, this is what you think is important. Well, in God's kingdom, it works just the other way around, just the other way around. And so if you want to welcome me, 
you need to welcome those that are of no value in your society, whether that's children or disabled people or homeless, or I don't know who that is in your, in, in, in your location and where you are. But that is the Jesus, <laughs> the Jesus move, as it were, to, think, uh, to turn things around. So in this second picture, we go from, a, in, in a couple of Bible versions, from a discussion about who's most important to, a discussion, so a discussion of who is most important, about selfish ambition, about destructive conversations and comparisons, to welcoming God by attending and valuing those who count for nothing in society. The disciples thought they were following Jesus, but they were on the wrong road. Remember the first picture, picture of the, right, the road of the righteous and the road of the wicked. Here the disciples found themselves going on the ro wrong road. And Jesus says, no, 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 you have to change roads if you want to receive me. So let's look at the third picture, James 3 and 4. And in this third picture, we see some of the same scenes in the first two pictures. You, you will see how it starts to, to make sense together. So there is something with wisdom, as in the first picture, the roads of the wicked and the roads of the, of the, the righteous. There is wisdom. that talk about wisdom. And here in James, we see very similar discussions that the Christian communities are having. Discussions about who is most important. It's, it's, it's a picture of self-ambition that we are seeing here. And it leads to destruction. And James, <laughs> James says, okay, 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 okay. Let's talk about this. Who is wise and who is understanding? You all claim to be wise and understanding. Well, who is wise and understanding? Well, the answer in the first picture was the one who walks on the road of the righteous who attends to the things of God and delights in God's ways. James says a similar thing. If you want to be wise and full of insight, well, show it by your good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. That's how the NIV translates it. By deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Humility? Hmm... Look again back at that second picture that the conversation the disciples had. Who's the most important? Just the opposite of humility, right? And James knows a thing or two about the, the kind of destructive dynamics underlying those conversations. They come from bitter envy and selfish ambition, James 3 says. They come from bitter envy, selfish ambition, and by dwelling on those in your heart, Rather than by dwelling on and meditating on the law of God, that vision of God, you start to dwell on selfish ambition and envy when someone else gets something that you wanted to have. That's toxic, folks. That's really toxic. That's not wisdom, James says. That so-called wisdom is not from heaven. That is not from God, but it is earthly, unspiritual, and even demonic, he says. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. This is the picture of the road of the wicked that we saw in Psalm 1. Do you see how that looks like? What that looks like? It's, it's a picture of disorder, every evil uh, practice. It leads, and we saw that in picture 1, it leads to destruction, it leads to ruins. And James I mean, this third picture here in James, it's so vivid because he sketches the contrast. So look at the road of the righteous where you find peace and where, where you do find true wisdom. And James says the wisdom that comes from heaven, that road of the righteous, that is first of all pure and then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial, and sincere now that's a sharp contrast with that other road isn't it that's a sharp contrast with self-ambition no this is considerate thinking about someone else and that leads also to an outcome peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness that is the language of the first road and then there is this fourth picture Proverbs 31, and it seems a little bit like the odd one out, but actually it belongs here as well on the same page in our photo album. 
So <laughs> this is the last chapter in Proverbs. And, and I don't know about you, but the way I grew up, um, I grew up with a, a Dutch Bible translation that, that talks about the good housewife. This was a chapter about the good housewife. Now, folks, this chapter has been used to oppress women, but that has never been the intention of the Hebrew writer here. This is actually a picture of not, not of a woman who just, you know, is almost a slave or just sits at, you know, the fire and cooks the food and cares for the children and the man, the husband goes out and work and all the rest of it. No, 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 this is a very active wife. Now, you can also misuse this in another way. I mean, look at what that wife does. That woman does. That is incredible. Most of us get a burnout if they have to do all of that, right? I mean, it's just incredible what she does. So I don't think that this is a picture that is normative in the sense like, oh, and now we all need to buy lands and plant wine uh, vineyards and, and all of that. That's not what's meant here. What we get here in Proverbs 31 is a picture of lady wisdom in action. If you know the book of Proverbs a little bit, in the beginning of that book, there is a figure in, which is called Lady Wisdom. Wisdom is portrayed as a lady. And here in the final chapter, we see a lady again. And it is Lady Wisdom in action. And I think that the clue is not in the amount of things that that lady is doing here. But the clue, I think, we find maybe in, um, in verse 30. In, in the NIV, Translation, it says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. Well, again, you can misuse this. Oh, you shouldn't wear jewelry. And, and I, I know churches where that is strongly discouraged. You, oh, women shouldn't wear any, you know, jewelry or makeup and all of that. That's not a point. That's absolutely not a point. But what is the noble woman, as, as the NIV translate, where does she find her value? And that is not in things that are fleeting or in your translation, it was like beauty is skin deep or something like that, I think. But it's in the fear of the Lord. Now, that's another one of those words, right? I mean, when you go to prophecy, you get a lot of those words. But the fear of the Lord is not something like, like being afraid of God, but it's that reference, that holy reference for God who is so much bigger than we are. And this takes us right back to Proverbs 1, verse 7. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And with this picture and with this ending, we are full circle. What is true wisdom? Psalm 1 says, our first picture, true wisdom is to walk on the road of the righteous and meditate on God's vision day and night. That is where true wisdom is. That is where the abundance of life is. That will give you abundance of life. That will bear much fruit, and it leads to that beautiful messianic banquet in the end. And so today, folks, look at the four pictures taken at very different places, different locations, different times. But somehow they belong together. Somehow they are about wisdom. And that wisdom is really, it begins all with the fear of the Lord to walk in that road that leads to love and peace, and where God is watching over us. Amen. You're invited. <laughs>